Good day to all ladies and gentlemen and welcome to my art studio. My name is Khan and today I am going to make a black widow model with the polymer clay. This model is 12 inch tall and the design is highly inspired from the black widow movie. Beside the polymer clay I will also use the real fabric for more realistic approach. So without any further ado let's draw that. So I start this project with collecting some reference images so I can easily follow the main design. Then I made an image of the model. This time I take a different approach cause I watched some other clay makers and they did that in the same way so they can move the model more freely. So I covered the image with the polymer clay. This is my very first time of doing a female model. So I applied a clay bit by bit until I get the right body shape. I'm continuously following the reference to get the right or close to the right. However, this is very least thing to do cause it's just a body so you can follow any lean female body. It doesn't really matter. I am following the reference just for the practice. Once I'm happy with the body shape, I smooth it out. Then I roll another piece of clay for the legs and simply insert it and blend it. Before I bake the model, I make sure the model is well smooth. After the baking, I do the both arms in the same way as I did with the legs and then bake it. Okay. So with this model, I wanted to do something different. So instead doing clothing with the clay, I decided to do with the real fabric. So I marked down every seam so I can apply my fabric more easily. This is the stretchable fabric that I'm gonna use for this project. It has very nice pattern and it sticks very well on the clay. The glue I'm using is Bison K. Very transparent and dries very quick. So I applied the glue on the edges and gently pressed my fabric down. It will take only 5 seconds until the glue dries and then I move forward with the rest fabric. After I put the fabric, I cover the whole fabric with the mud podge. So it's lock the fabric down and I don't have to worry about the fabric at all. This step will also give you a very smooth and clean texture and your fabric is not going anywhere in future. Once the mud podge dries, I finish the second half of the pan. Now to hide the seams and for the design pattern, I'm using the same fabric and I covered with the mud podge and let it dry. This is the net mesh. I'm just using this for a different texture. So I paste this mesh with the spray adhesive. After that, I cut out all the pieces and double check that they are all in the right sizes and paste it with the super glue. For the face, again I am using my references, even though I am so bad with the human faces. But here I tried my best to get it right face. I usually start doing face modeling with the half face, so I can control the face more freely. And also I am kinda comfortable doing it that way, because at the end I get a perfect face shape and features. And if I made any kind of mistake, so I can easily fix it without taking any stress.
Once I finish the main face, I baked it with the heat gun and then I add the ears. However, it is completely unnecessary to make the ears cause those ears will be covered under the hairs. But I thought I can have some practice, you know, for my future models. For the hair, first I made the outline template so I can easily follow the line and put the clay according it. Also, I don't like the new hairstyle of Black Widow. I like the end games one better. So I combine those two hairstyles and make my own. Also, I'm going to texture my hair step by step. I am using heat gun to cure at the same time. So I don't ruin my previous texturing. For the hairline, I use the sharp scalpel knife. After the hair is done, I bake the whole face and I will do the braided ponytail at the very end. Then I finally attach the head with the super glue and then blend it with the clay. I also put the skin color clay on the chest area and bake with the heat gun. Now in the same time, I do the both hands and bake it to preserve. Then I attach the hands in the same way as I did with the head. This is the wooden base, especially for the 12 inch action figures. I bought it from Amazon for only $2 a piece. I drill the holes so I can place my model without any fear of falling. Then I make the boots and blend it with the legs. Then I continue to design the boots according to the references and bake them with the heat gun. Okay, so there are some major changes here. I remove all the previous netting which we did earlier because it did not turn out the way I wanted. This is the piece I used it earlier so what happened is the adhesive I used to paste the net mesh it expand as the time passed. So when I paint it it give me a very crappy look and the whole honeycomb effect is gone and I really want that effect. So I replace this with the new clay sheets. Anyways so I move forward with the upper parts. Cut the fabric into the right pieces and paste it with the bison glue and cover it with the mud podge. Once the fabric dries, I hide all the seams with the pre-baked clay stripes. Here you can see how I am taking all the measurements and cutting out the template for my main suit design on a pre-baked clay sheet. After cutting all the templates, I am just doing some final checks. Once I satisfied, I fix it with the super glue. This is the main advantage of working with the pre-baked sheets that I can manipulate my templates more easily and not to worrying about ruining my previous work. But in this case, I must have to work with the pre-baked templates because I cannot bake the model anymore because of the fabric and if I do, it will burn out and destroy all my hard work. So with that down, I start putting that net mesh again on all the design and seams area or where I feel it will look cool. I already put some netting on some area and leave it for two days just to see if it stays the same and not to expand like the last time. Here as you can see, I test it out and this is how it looks with the paint and I get all the honeycomb pattern that I finally achieved what I was after. Pasting those net meshes is kind of fun but at the same time it's very time consuming cause I don't want to use too much super glue cause super glue will close all the net holes and give me a bumpy texture and super glue will show up in the final look. So to avoid that I only applied super glue at the end corners bit by bit and tried not to put too much and keep it clean as much as possible. Once I'm done. I cut all the extra net with the help of very thin sharp blade. So after two days of netting, I can finally start painting. 
First, I cover the face with the masking tape so I don't get the paint on. And then I mix the paint and get the dark bluish gray tone and spray it on the whole body until I get the right color. Then I use the black paint to cover all the design area and the boots. I am also using very thick paint so I don't have to do a second coat. Next thing I do is the lining on the suit. So I already make those clay lining with the clay scooter and bake them. I created those clay lines into two sizes so I can use them in a different area. This process is very time consuming and fun at the same time. I use very tiny amount of super glue so it don't runs out on the main suit. After all the linings done, the whole suit is looking pretty good. I hide all the edges and imperfection areas with this lining. Now for the shoulder pads and the knee pads, I make my own with the clay. While for the other gadgets like guns and teaser sticks, I use 3D printer. Once I paint them, I attach them with the super glue. I did the same thing with the shoulder holster and then I repaint every single stripe as well as shoulder holster. I also make the utility belt from the scratch with the pre-baked clay and then paint it. So these are the gadgets that I 3D printed. So I attach these gadgets with the super glue and leave it to dry. The second last thing is to complete the braided ponytail. So I took three linings and braided them like a ponytail and attached the tail with the super glue and blended with the clay and carefully baked the tail with the heat gun. Now the final step is the face painting. I cover the main suit with the masking tape and leave the face open. Then I use the skin tone acrylic paint as my primer coat. It will give me a plain and smooth surface to work on. Then I just simply use the makeup shades for the face. Since I am very comfortable with these shades, so I know exactly how much I have to apply and do the shading. I am only using a very cheap acrylic paints, which for sure are not suitable for the face painting. And I recently discovered that the artists who do the face painting, they are using various types of paints and color washes, which includes oil paints and enamel paints. So after the face paint is done, I paint the hair with the dark combination of red and brown. I apply two coats on hair so I can cover the whole head. And in the very last, I give her all the new Star Tech weapons and recharge her stringers.
So I really hope you enjoyed today's video. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel for more artwork. And also follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Link in the description box below. I will see you soon and until my next video. Bye bye.